between 2012 and end 2016, South Africa's mining sector shed some 70,000 jobs. Last week alone, Sibanye Gold fired another 1,500 for taking part in an illegal strike. With highly controversial provisions, the mining charter introduced last week may now accelerate that job's bloodbath at a time when Africa's largest economy is in a, in a recession. CGTN's Raman Yang explored the legality of the charter's provisions with the deputy editor of the Financial Mail. The Chamber of Mines, which is the biggest mining organization, has already said it will go to court and interdict this because this, uh, this mining charter is illegal and unconstitutional in many respects. It breaks, uh, it contravenes the company's act for one by just uh, merely demanding that before anyone gets uh, uh, First, it demands a 30% uh, black representation in shareholding, but then it says uh, those black investors must get 1% of the revenue as a payout without actually defining what that payout is. Is that a dividend? Or, or what kind of distribution will that be? And it puts that ahead of even the debt, the bondholders in those companies. So they, are, they, they seem to be introducing a, a new law that one is, uh, is, is, is in conflict with the, uh, with, with, the, with the Companies Act that governs corporate South Africa. It's also in conflict with the Constitution, which demands the equality of treatment for everybody. Right. This, let's talk about something you just mentioned, that 30% ownership limit. There was a bit of a dispute about whether or not that applies in perpetuity. So you must keep it at 30% regardless of where it was uh, in the past. Why is compliance to that 30% level, especially whether or not it's historical or present, a contentious issue? It is a, a contentious issue because uh, people invest in companies, whether they come through the black ownership requirement or just putting their own money uh, else, uh, any other way, they invest there in order to make a profit. So if, if, if you then are, are, must, are supposed to be buying shares and are not supposed to sell them, there's no point in getting into business and there's no point for these mining companies to be, to be made to, uh, uh, to account for, for people that have sold out their shares when they thought they have made a profit, it cannot be in perpetuity. Uh, no, nobody in the market invests in perpetuity. The owners of those mining companies themselves have had to buy and sell things depending on, on, on their circumstances. Indeed, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because this does have some similarities with the, 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 the takeover, as you, as, you, as you might put it, of, um, let's see, Optimum Coal and uh, Tegeta Resources, doesn't it? Because this does seem like it's just creating opportunities for more crony to take place in South Africa's mining sector. That is absolutely what is happening and the president is known uh, to have uh, done that all his, all his time in office. He's been there uh, merely facilitating uh, 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 rent seeking and capitalism for a chronic capitalism for a certain, for a certain faction of, of his family. And indeed, uh, th th there's a, f a family here that is that is said to be in charge of the government that we think we elected him into. Uh, but uh, it's clearly not. They, they took on uh, over Optimum uh, through Tegeta in exactly a similar way, pressurizing Glencore to sell out. And, 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 and that family got it for, for almost next to nothing. This is what they are trying to create throughout the mining industry. But like I said earlier, it is not going to work because the rest of society is not going to take, down, uh, to to take that lying lying down. Right.